So how can you make sure that you're not funding the CCP? And I think the reason a lot of people actually invest in China is because they fall into the trap of believing that China is the next big superpower. I know this might sound strange to a lot of people, but you may actually be funding the Chinese government and funding the Chinese military without knowing it. A lot of us choose to invest in Chinese companies. It's a way to make a quick buck, and it has proven to be quite lucrative to a lot of people in the past, being sort of the new investment option on the scene in the last decade or so. But something that we don't realize is that China isn't really out there to be the friend of everyone out there. Some technologies are safe and foolproof. Well, at least most of the time. The thing is, any modern device that is connected to the internet is at risk. You might not know this, but there are people out there that make money off of your data. Whether they actually steal anything from you or not, your data and privacy can still be compromised for someone else's profit. What is the old adage? Don't go into battle without armor? Well, NordVPN has just rolled out its threat protection feature. This new feature steps up your cybersecurity. Once threat protection is on, it protects you from malicious sites, downloads, trackers, and those pesky intrusive ads. Threat protection is constantly on the lookout, even if you're not connected to a VPN. Right now, you can get a two-year plan at a huge discount, plus one additional month for free when you go to nordvpn.com slash serpentza. Remember, it's risk-free. If you don't want it, you've got a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash serpentza, or just click the link in the description below. And now, back to the show. And China's unfortunately using all of this investment that's coming from perhaps your retirement plan and various other investments you might have in Chinese companies to build their military and to bully their neighbors and to start to, well, let's just say, become quite the bad actor. So if you were, from a moral standpoint, looking for a way to not help feed the dragon, so to speak, how could you make sure that you weren't? You see, investment companies and, for instance, your 401k might actually be tricking you into investing into China by saying that some of your portfolio is invested in emerging Asia markets. What this really just means China. But I thought rather than me try to explain it to you, since I'm no financial expert, I'd actually ask a financial expert. So let me introduce you to Tom Nash. So as emerging markets kind of become this go-to place for cheaper investments and a lot more upside, a lot of people are looking at China as one of those destinations because it's huge, has a lot of interesting companies like Tencent, Alibaba, Didi Global. The problem is that for me, China was never an investable country, not because of its people, its culture, its food, which all I love. It's because of the CCP. The Chinese Communist Party is the root of all evil. They created it impossible for me to invest in China. They have no oversight no checks and balances, no stability. Economically, it's impossible to invest in China, not to mention the moral reasons, the political reasons, and a whole bunch of reasons that make this an uninvestable opportunity. And I'll explain. Our Alibaba in itself is a terrific company. Same goes for Tencent. And I'm sure there's plenty more. BYD, there's a lot of great Chinese companies. The problem is that they're located in geography that doesn't make it possible for you to safely invest. One thing you have to understand is that you're always subject to the whims of a Chinese bureaucrat. If they want your company gone, like Didi Global, it's going to be gone. If they want the boss to be gone, Jack Ma, he's going to be gone. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't appeal. There's no courts. There's no free media. It's basically at the whims of that bureaucrat. Now, the other thing is you have to remember, as a U.S. citizen, if you invest in the Chinese companies, you're not getting stock in a Chinese company. In fact, that is actually prohibited by law in China. What you're getting is a contractual right to own part of the profits of the Chinese company. So you're paying as if you're getting property, but all you're getting is a contractual right. Doesn't seem like a good deal to me, especially given the fact that there's a lot of whimsical things going on in China that don't make no sense. For example, the government decides they shut down the whole country. Zero tolerance policy. Boom. Gone. What are you supposed to do? Does this make sense? Is it a good decision, bad decision? There's not going to be any debate in the press. There's not going to be any check balances. There's not going to be any Supreme Court hearings, some Congress trying to decide what's best. Some bureaucrat decided it's the best thing to do, and it gets done. As simple as that. 
Not to mention the fact that this whole structure of offering VIEs, variable interest entities, these contractual rights in the profits of Chinese companies to U.S. investors, which in itself is kind of a scam, has never been approved neither by the Chinese authorities or the SEC. In fact, both are kind of looking at this right now saying, hey, we might take a crack at this. Both Gary Gensler, which is the head of the SEC, and the Chinese authorities have implied that they don't like this VIE structure. So that in itself puts your whole list of investments in China. Huge risk. I mean, you can't ignore it. In fact, it's so amorphic, so crazy, there's no way to model it into an Excel spreadsheet to actually give you a number of how much of a discount you should get by investing in China. Not to mention the fact that the whole Chinese market is based on a massive pyramid scheme of a real estate development cycle. About 30% of the Chinese GDP is in this real estate development craziness. And after Evergrande, you should know that this is kind of a shaky country as far as its GDP growth, as far as its development, not to mention the demographic crisis, not to mention the fact they're not energy dependent. It's just too shaky as an economy to invest in. Not my cup of tea. And if you think that's the worst of it, hang on a second. Just so you know, in order for a Chinese company to go public in the U.S., it has to be compliant with U.S. accounting principles. It's called the U.S. GAAP, U.S. General Accounting Principles. And they claim they are. But the problem is that when the U.S. Accounting Board is trying to actually review these financials, they're getting blocked by the Chinese authorities. They're not getting any access. So that's why the U.S. have imposed a law. If by 2023, these companies won't give us access to audit them, they're going to be delisted from the U.S. stock exchanges. That leaves us about a year. And so far, there's been absolutely no progress in this. Now, there have been indications that the Chinese might agree to do it. But so far, no bundle. No access means they're about to get delisted. And that risk, again, is something that has to be priced in on top of the other risk we just talked about. And that's just the economics of it. I'm not talking about the politics, the morality, everything that goes on in China as far as freedom of speech, as far as human rights, as far as just not a good country to invest in, in my opinion, as long as the CCP is in power. And that is why you have to make sure that if you actually have money in ETFs which actually invest in emerging markets, you have to make sure that these are ex-China ETFs. I'll give you an example. One actually has a reputation for being an ex-China fund. It's called the Freedom 100 Emerging Markets ETF. It's a fund that absolutely has no Chinese stock as a matter of principle. And there's other options. For example, the iShares MSCI Emerging Markets X China ETF, EMXC, or Colombia EM Core X China ETF, XCEM. Whatever the case may be, if you have money in pooled investments, whether it's directly or through your 401ks, retirement plans, whatever it may be, you have to make sure with your brokerage that your money is not invested in any Chinese stocks if you have exposure to emerging markets, in case you don't want this to be the case. Now, if you want to invest in China, go right ahead. I'm just saying, if you agree with me here, this is the way to do it. Now, why do a lot of people see China as the next messiah? Why do they want so much money in these markets? And I think the reason a lot of people actually invest in China is because they fall into the trap of believing that China is the next big superpower. They're about to take over and become the next United States, which couldn't be further from the truth. China has massive, massive problems on the global level, international level, domestic level. They have an energy crisis, a food crisis, geopolitical crisis, demographic crisis. There's not enough young people in China. The one-child policy has completely screwed up their demographics. They have no stability absolutely no chance to become the world's reserve currency because of the CCP, because of the instability and lack of regulation it creates. No rule of law, no stability, no reserve currency. China is absolutely not in a position to take over anything. In fact, they're flexing despite the fact that they're in deep doo-doo. So I would invest in China, but I understand why some people fall into this fantasy of China taking over the world. Nothing could be further from the truth. But hey, don't say I didn't warn you. I hope you found that interesting and educational. Remember, I'm not out there to give financial advice. I leave that up to the experts. But I would like to try and educate you so that you can identify when you are investing in China, when you are investing in the Chinese government and military. Because, look, the companies themselves can be fantastic, 
but they still are all beholden to the Chinese government and the money always makes its way back into the Chinese government's pocket. So anyway, if you think Tom Nash is an interesting person, his links are down below. He's a bit of a maverick financial advisor and a really good guy. I've actually been on his channel a couple of times now. We had a pretty long interview the other day. If you're interested, you can go and check it out. There's a link to that as well. Until next time, you know the drill, as always. Stay awesome.